there has been nothing but controversy, discussion, debate, arguments, and all sorts of papers and analyses done surrounding the peculiar, tantalizing, and sadly very fragmentary remains of the largest sail-backed fish snagger to ever live, Spinosaurus. Was it a semi-aquatic fish hunter as some parts of its anatomy might suggest from a cursory glance? Current analyses seem to suggest it was just a beachcomber, a heron-like animal. But one new study posits that an entirely different giant carnivorous dinosaur may have occasionally chased its prey into the water in order to better catch up to them. Tyrannosaurus rex The biggest of the theropod dinosaurs were the largest terrestrial carnivorous animals to ever walk the face of the planet, as far as is known, with some reaching masses of 9 tons or more. Since there is literally not a single animal alive today that is like these animals, making inferences about their biology is hard to do. I mean, sure we have crocs and birds, but none of them are 9 tons and 15 feet tall or carrying around a pair of workable meat hooks. One of the most massive, largest, and definitely the most well known is Tyrannosaurus. One of the reasons behind it being the most well known theropod dinosaurs is its sample size. Despite these animals being huge, there are a lot of them known to science, though far more remain locked away. As such, it is one of the few dinosaurs for which their biology is rather well understood. Obviously, one of the broadest avenues to take when it comes to understanding the biology of Tyrannosaurus is how it lived, like how was it able to get its dinner. We can be absolutely certain that it used its mouth to do this, but what about all the other parts of its body that helped it carve up hadrosaur steaks and triceratops hawks? One of the more overlooked aspects of the tyrant lizard's arsenal is its legs. Not for slashing or holding down its prey as it tore it limb from screaming limb, but like how did it literally use those legs to get its prey? I'm talking biomechanics. The biomechanics of the legs of Tyrannosaurus have been discussed and modeled over and over again in different ways for decades. The most recent research suggests the animal was incapable of true running. You can learn more about that research in my video on the subject, link in the description and comment section below. They found, through computer modeling, with some newly applied parameters, that the animal was about as fast as the fastest human can run, and could not actually lift off the ground with both feet in the air. This means Tyrannosaurus just walked extremely fast. The top speeds were estimated at 10 meters per second or 22 miles per hour. These new discoveries go against what is observed in the muscle scars of the bones of the legs and pelvis, the main reason the animal was traditionally estimated to be rather fast. The limits on Tyrannosaurus's running ability were the strength of its bones. There is direct evidence that Tyrannosaurus at least ate the other herbivores in its environment, with healed bite marks that could only be made by the predator preserved in Edmontosaurus and Triceratops, two animals that have been estimated to be capable of rather quick speeds, 15 meters per second or more depending on the locomotion. That's faster than Tyrannosaurus. So how could these predators outrun and catch their prey that we know they did? Well, they may have just been ambush predators like many modern animals. Another possibility is that they could just last a while. I mean, while running, you sickos. 
they just had better stamina than their prey. Some quantitative studies have found that Tyrannosaurus had a higher probability of having high endurance than they were at reaching high speeds. So, that brings us to a brand new study that was just published by R. Ernesto Blanco in the Zoological Journal of the Linnaean Society in which he hypothesizes that Tyrannosaurus was capable of and may have regularly or semi-regularly ran its prey into bodies of water to be able to more easily catch up to them as they were able to run in water. You see, there are some fossil trackways that record the footprints of small theropod dinosaurs running, walking, or punting along a riverbed. So this behavior is not unheard of in theropod dinosaurs. Some may recall that early paleontologists assumed that many dinosaurs were simply too large to live on land and needed the buoyancy of water to keep themselves from collapsing under their own weight, a la whales. Some may also recall that this turned out to be far from the truth as dinosaurs had plenty of weight-saving mechanisms in their bodies to solve this issue. This does not, however, mean that water does not have a buoyant property that could have and would have been taken advantage of by the many forms of dinosaurs. According to Blanco, large animals have large absolute maximum speed values when moving in water. He also posits that large animals with long legs have less drag when running through water than small stubby animals. Therefore, Blanco's hypothesis is that shallow water environments may have offered an advantage to large theropods like Tyrannosaurus when pursuing the swifter and smaller prey animals young hadrosaurs, and adult ornithomimosaurs. To test this hypothesis, Blanco used a biomechanical model of locomotion in water to estimate a conservative value of the max speeds that Tyrannosaurus could make while wading, punting, or swimming. Funnily enough, Blanco used Stan as the Tyrannosaurus model. Good thing it's owned by an institution now or all this data would be scientifically useless, as if it isn't already. He also used a juvenile Edmontosaurus and an adult Ornithomimosaur as additional models. See this diagram? This is how Blanco estimated mass for the animals he used. He found that when the animals were wading in the water with their body outside of the water itself, Tyrannosaurus could go at 7.7 .7 meters per second. This is the most conservative land speed as that would be about the speed something could be going in this kind of locomotive mode. Both Edmontosaurus and Struthiomimus were 14 meters per second. They get away from the Tyrannosaurus. When all three are wading with their bodies partly immersed in water and or are punting off the bottom, Tyrannosaurus was 6.28 to 5.54 meters per second. Edmontosaurus was 4.95 to 4.48 meters per second. And Struthiomimus was 4.23 to 4.47 meters per second. Tyrannosaurus catches up to these guys and eats them. Lastly, when all were surface swimming without touching the bottom, Tyrannosaurus was at 2.93 meters per second, Edmontosaurus was 2.32 meters per second, and Struthiomimus was 2.27 meters per second. These are roughly similar, but Tyrannosaurus is a little bit faster, catches up to them, and eats them. So yes, Tyrannosaurus could close the speed gap with smaller prey items by chasing them into the water. Blanco does not, at any point in his paper, hypothesize or propose that this was a specific adaptation of Tyrannosaurus. They were not water hunters, but he found they were able to speed themselves up while their prey became slower. This study curiously also doesn't bring up any Triceratops. There are plenty of Triceratops remains with Tyrannosaurus bites taken out of them. Could this have had implications for behavior among packs of Tyrannosauruses? Possibly, with younger, faster animals chasing prey towards water bodies and the adults taking them out. All of this is utter speculation though, with no scientific basis. This actually has more interesting implications for other theropods, more specifically those that were already thought to have semi-aquatic habits like Spinosaurus, but also Torvosaurus and Ceratosaurus. Perhaps this phenomenon would have been used by the Morrison predators to catch their prey more easily with the aid of their taller tails. Who knows? I just thought this study was neat. 
Even Dr. Holtz chimed in, suggesting this is technically possible and technically had to have happened at least once, but is an unnecessary solution to a non-problem. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to Elephant Tier patrons Abby Smith, Arda Bayer, Biotiverse, Cherry Shaw, Chris Frampton, Christoph Hubbinger, Dinosaur, Ed Peretz, Isaiah Garza, Jax the Hacks, Natty Cat, PA Brew News, Ray, Rudy Redgrave, Smiling Walrus, Staniforth Hopkins, Steve Bradshaw, Thea Svensson, and Extraterrestrial. As well as my top as tier Tyrannosaurus patrons, Admin, Antron, Aphid Kirby, Cyber, Dana Manchester, Danny Van Heck, Henry Brennan, Iberospinus, Iron Bladesman, Joshua Mana, Panic, Radio 404, Robert Kessler, Ruben Zachariah, Swaffles is Weird, Teeny Dragator, and The Dogman.